So step one, as with pretty much any project, so step one, as with pretty much any project, is going to be to mill up your lumber. Uh, this is all bits of white oak from like relatively scrappy uh, slabs that I had that just weren't going to be much good for anything else. Uh, and I went in this case with five eighths inch uh, thick by about one inch wide. You could really do anything you want. This is just what was well suited to the lumber I had. I think it started out as five quarter, and then by the time I had it all planed down, I ended up with about an inch thickness, so I kept that. Uh, and then just went with five eighths because it seemed like a good amount. Um, you just want to make sure you have enough that you can uh, take a corner of it out and still have a decent amount of meat on the wood there. So essentially what we're going to do once it's all cut to length is make these little L shapes. Uh, and that's going to create the bulk of it and then there's one little trick so you don't have to deal with miter joints, uh, which I will show you when we get to it. So let me cut these to length first. Uh, this is going to be for about a three foot by four foot map that I own. Uh, I have a lot of little frames to make, but I figured this is the good one for the video. And like I said, it's going to be a gallery style uh, frame, which means they're a little deeper uh, and thinner. And again, that's mostly just a result of the wood I have access to, because I find that they're probably a little less wood intensive than uh, some of the other styles you can, you can do. And this is just for my house, so it doesn't have to be perfect. But figuring out the dimensions is pretty simple with this style that I'm doing here. The widths of the rails are just the widths of whatever piece you're dealing with. So the interior width uh, is, is gonna match the width of your art piece. So in my case, about three feet. So that's what this long guy is gonna become, because it's about 75 inches long, so I'll cut it into two 36 inch sections. And then the tall guys are going to be the height of the piece, plus about, in my case, five eighths of an inch. That's gonna depend a little bit uh, on the wood you use, but I'll show you how I arrived at that calculation uh, when I get there. So let's cut these to length. Now, you could very easily, with everything that I've done, still just do a miter joint, which is a 45 degree angle cut here and here, and they would mate together and work out just fine. What I'm going to do instead, because I don't really like miter joints, I think they're tough to get perfect, and if they're not perfect, they look really bad, is just nip off the short side here to the width of the interior of this cut here. And what that'll do is it'll allow the, uh, so this would be the rail, the horizontal piece, uh, or the width of your frame. That'll allow that to stay full length, and it just lets this one tuck just a little bit extra. And that's why, in this case, I added 5 eighths of an inch. It's because this space here is about 5 sixteenths, and so you double that, so it's one on top, one on bottom, and that means that the dimensions should still all work out. So you can see, I did a couple test cuts on one of my little blocks here. This one, first one I did, there was just a little tiny gap, probably a 32nd of an inch. But that's enough that it can leave some issues with the glue up. So I just dialed it in by bringing the fence in a little bit closer. And that one is pretty much dead on perfect. So I will leave the fence like that and cut all my rails. The one thing you really want to be careful about here is make sure you know which of your pieces are the, the rails and which are the vertical pieces, the styles. I say this because I'm doing a whole batch of these. I'm only filming the big one, but I'm doing a whole batch of these, and the width is not always the longer dimension or the shorter dimension. So make sure you know on each thing that you're doing, if you're doing several of these, which one's which. Uh, the good news is, the styles, the, the tall pieces, vertical pieces, you don't have to touch at all. Once they're cut, they're cut, and you're good. So the only things you're worried about right now are the rails.
I had never used one of these strap clamps before for a large picture frame, but I figured this would be a good test case for it. I wasn't thoroughly enamored with it. It worked fine. It was a little bit fiddly. I had to keep going and adjusting all the corners, as you can see. I think if this frame were any smaller, I would have just used normal uh, bar clamps or F-style clamps to hold the widths together because you really only need clamping pressure in that direction. But for what it was, it worked out okay. And for spending 15 bucks on it, I am not too upset. All right, now we're at the probably the trickiest part of this entire equation, which is uh, from this big one, cutting the plexiglass and the backing board to the right size. These pieces need to be 36 inches wide by 46 and a half tall, which gets a little bit tricky because the maximum cut capacity on this saw is just a scooch over 30 inches. So I need to figure out a way to cut these pieces that are about four feet by four feet into the right dimensions. Let's see what I come up with. Keep this all in place I'm going to use what's called a point driver. They're about 70 to 80 bucks. I probably would just use brad nails and tap them in if I weren't also doing another 10 of these over the course of living here. So I figured investing a little bit and making it easier would be good. Now it is fairly heavy but it's a nice looking picture frame so I'm pretty pleased about that. I ended up just using drywall screws after all, and that worked out uh, just fine. So, hopefully it doesn't fall apart <laughs> from the weight of it. And if it does, I'll just fix it and rebuild it, because that's how it goes. Um, it looks a little bit wonky versus the couch here. This house was built in 1820. Uh, nothing is flat, nothing is square. It's sort of a nightmare. Um, so I did my best to get it level, and I'm just going to have to be happy with that, because otherwise I'm just going to go insane trying to reference off of a bunch of faces that aren't square. But I think that is about going to do it for this one. So let me know if you decide to undertake any uh, picture frames just like this. And uh, I look forward to seeing uh, what you guys think. So let me know if you like it. And uh, if you think I deserved it, please do hit that uh, like and subscribe button. It makes a huge difference for me to know that I should keep making these videos. And if there's nothing else, I will see you in the next one and we will make some more stuff. Thanks.